Uh, before we put the new seal, seals back in, uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the uh, seal cartridge repla replacement procedure. Um, now we'd be doing this if oil was coming out around the bottom here, around the weep hole. Uh, the first thing you want to do would be remove your proximity switch on the side you're working on. What this will do, this will let the oil that's inside here will gravity feed back into the reservoir so you don't have oil that could be running out. So you take it off and lay it off to the side. Usually it takes three to five minutes for the oil to run down. Uh, this one here is a, a dry unit so we don't have to worry about that. Um, next thing you want to do is take a little screwdriver or you can use a magnet and reach in there and pull the uh, retaining flange out. If you notice it has a groove on one side and also says this side faces out. Make sure you don't turn it around. Uh, very, very important that you get the groove facing out. It also has some holes in there. You want to make sure you clean them out. Uh, no debris, no trash, it goes back in there. We have a, uh, a, du a dual tool here. That one end is the uh, seal cartridge removal tool. Uh, this in here has internal threads in it. Your hydraulic seal cartridge has some threads on the outside of it. So once our oil bleeds down, we'll thread this on. And usually you can pull out. Get that going there. This is your hydraulic seal cartridge. You can replace the whole uh, unit as a uh, complete assembly. You can get a rebuild kit to replace just the O-rings and seals inside. Uh, uh, most people get the whole cartridge because it's uh, sometimes a little tedious to get the uh, seals and O-rings in the right position down inside there. Or you could also send them back into us and we can rework them for you and send them back. Again, make sure you use uh, genuine KMT parts when you put stuff back together. Now, for some reason, if we had to remove the plunger, uh, the other end of the tool has little cogs on it. And it also has a, uh, a collet here sleeve that actually will clamp down on the plunger to remove it. Inside the, uh, the piston there, there's a metal band that has uh, pins on it. It's a spring tension band. And what we're going to do, we're going to slide it in on the, uh, um, say on the low side. And then we're going to rotate it until it balances out where the pins are balancing on those lips right there. And then we're going to release the pins. Slide that on. Put our collet in there. If you hear the, the snaps uh, or the um, snap of the uh, band ro pins rolling over, you have to rotate it again. Sometimes you hear the snap, rotate it until it bounces on the high side. There's the plunger. Now it's just tapered on the end. Always inspect the plunger for uh, scratches. Clean it off really good. If you can catch your fingernail anywhere on the plunger, there's a good chance your seals won't hold. Um, if they're not too bad, you can send them back in and we can rework it um, or you can replace it. Uh, one thing to note here, uh, uh, if you are going to have to change the plunger, you want to make sure that the cylinder is shifted over to the side that's extended towards you. You can do that from the maintenance screen on the pump by going to the maintenance and jogging it left or right. Um, this one we didn't have to do that here because we're, uh, it's a dry machine, but if you're just going to change your seals, it's not really necessary to, to shift it one way or the other, but if you're going to remove it or inspect the plunger really good, you have to have it ex ex extended out towards you. When you go to install it, you don't have to lock it back in the pins, just put it back on your tool. You want to use your tool as a guide so the pins will uh, latch back behind there. You want your pins to latch back there, so push it in. Just make sure you see all your pins down through there. There should be uh, uh, six pins down inside there that holds the, holds the plunger in place. On our new seals, on the hydraulic seals, you put some FML2 grease on it. Doesn't take a whole lot, it's just mainly so when you install them, you don't damage any of the seals. And then thread it back on your tool, just a couple threads. Slide it on, push it on, the bottom's out, unthread your tool.
After you clean the retaining flange, and make sure all the holes are through. You can clean them out. I usually take the straw inside there to make sure all the holes are, are cleaned out. And we'll wipe it off good. Just a light coat of the goop on the back side here. And remember your face, your O-ring and this side faces out, faces towards you. And if you need to, you can use that tool to push that in. And it's bottomed out right there. Make sure your threads are clean when you put things back together. Clean all the old goop um, off of the cylinder thread. If there's any dirt inside the cylinder, clean it out, wipe it out with a rag. Yeah. One important note, um, when you put the flange in, make sure the weep hole is, is towards the bottom. That will let uh, the, um, when the material does build up in there, it will let it fall out and not let it build up on the plunger as it strokes back and forth. When you remove your seals from the packaging, uh, it'll come with a, a little drawing and procedure that shows the position of the seals, how they go in there, and instructions on the back. Again, very critical, make sure your hands are free from any dirt, trash that goes on there, and on these things here, we don't put any lubrication at all, no grease, uh, no O-ring lube, uh, we just slide them on the plunger just like they are, and the brass part goes on first. Um, place your O-rings and seals on, following the procedure that you come with, with comes with the seals. I, I usually use the liner here, to push them back to, to make sure they get properly in, in the right spot, make sure they go all the way back. And then I leave your uh, um, liner on there, that way your plunger won't uh, get scratched when you put the cylinder on. Um, put some goop on your threads. Take the sleeve. Start it on there. Uh, before you put, use your wrench, you may want to clean the cylinder off here a little bit more in case there's some goop or some, some grease there that will kind of cause your cylinder wrench to slip. And if it does slip, uh, uh, even taking it off, you may want to put a, uh, either a rag or some uh, 600 sandpaper around it. That just helps grip it as you spin it on there. And bottom it out and just hand tight. You don't have to hit it with a hammer very hard. Uh, just tap it with your hand. Just make sure it bottoms out. The seal kit comes with some super lube that actually you put on the chamfer of the cylinder. You don't put anything on the seals. We just take a little bit and put on the chamfer. Make sure you use a clean, uh, uh, your hands are clean or your gloves are clean. Just on the chamfer right there. And that's it. And then we'll also put some goop on the outside of the cylinder here, so we won't have any galling or binding as it goes into the cylinder. There's a little groove right here. The cylinder you can't reverse in for in. You wanna make sure that you get the, uh, the side that has the extra groove cut in it towards your high pressure seals. Slide it on. Once you get it started in there, then you can take a rubber mallet, tap it into the bottoms out, and then we're ready to put our uh, um, seal head back on.